Hello there, students. Dr. Carver here. Today we are going to talk about one of the cardiovascular system heart, which is the blood. So let's get started. What is the cardiovascular system? It's a circulating transport system that has, of course, the heart that we are going to see later on uh, in another lecture. Conduction system, which are the blood vessels, and then the one that we are going to talk about today, the medium or the fluid medium uh, blood. The major functions of the blood is to transport gases, nutrients, and also some waste product. And all the regular the, 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 the blood also play a very important role in regulating the pH and during the osmosis and maintain also the body temperature and protect against foreign substance and also um, produce clot formations. So when you are having a, a cough or injuries, the blood will help you sell these injuries by forming the temperature of the, the blood is, of course, the body temperature, about 38 degrees Celsius. You have high viscosity. Is the pH, it's between 735 and 745, which is a little slightly alkaline or basic. It represents between 7 to 8 percent of the body weight in kilograms. There are two major constituent composition of the blood. is made 55 percent is a plasma, and the rest, 45 percent, are formed elements. The 55 percent of the plasma is made major, um, made. Um, in, in big part of water, 90 to 91% of water. 7% are proteins such as albumin, globulins, and fibrinogen, and 2% and are other solid like some iron, nutrient, gases, and some regulatory substance. The, the formed elements that are 45% of our blood is made by three type of uh, cells, the platelets, the white blood cells, and the red blood cells. The red blood cells or erythrocyte major function is to transport oxygen. The white blood cells or leukocyte, remember that site, leukocyte mean cell. You have two types of white blood cells or leukocytes. Either they are granulated, or we call them granulocytes. We have three, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophil, or non-granulated, agranulocytes, lymphocytes, and monocyte. And the third type of the formed element is the platelets. They are the, the, those cells that they are involved in the clothing, the blood clothing. So we said that between 50 to 60 percent of the blood volume is a plasma, and more than 90 percent of those plasma is water. And we have seven percent. Um, in this plasma are proteins, albumin, globulin, fibrinogen, and regulatory proteins. Fibrinogen is very important. We are going to see that it's very important on playing a role there in the clothing. and can be converted to the fibrin, which is uh, fibrin and soluble fiber fibrins. The, 
the albumin, the major contributor to the osmotic pressure of the plasma, transport lipid steroids hormones. Globulin transports ion hormones, lipid and immune functions. One percent represent of the plasma represents other solids such as electrolyte, calcium, magnesium, chloride, carbonate, bicarbonate, phosphate group, or some organic nutrients that are used to form the ATP. So I just said the three classes of the plasma protein are albumin. Albumin is uh, represents more than 60% of the decompositions. They are important regulations of the water movement between tissue and the blood. And transport substances such as fatty acids, steroid hormones, and uh, steroid hormones. Globulin represents 35% of those plasma proteins. They play a major role in the immune system transporting molecules such as antibodies. So in this case, we will call them immunoglobulin. Fibrinogen, or that represents 4% of this plasma protein, are responsible for the formation of the blood clot, produce long and insoluble strand of fibrin. How those form elements are produced? They are produced by a process that we call hematopoiesis or hemopoiesis. By stem cells, there are either two types of stem cells, myeloid or lymphoid. The stem cells in the bone marrow divide to produce hemocytoblasts. So the stem cells either is going to get to produce pro erythroblasts that develop into a red blood cells or myoblasts that develop into basophil or lymphoblasts, as the word said it, develop into lymphocytes, monoblasts, monocytes, and giant mega karyoblasts that develop into the platelet cells. So they have those pro erythroblasts, myoblasts, lymphoblasts, monoblasts, and mega karyoblasts are derived from one stem cells, right? This is stem cells in the bone marrow form either population of erythroblasts. that will differentiate it into an early erythroblast, then an intermediate erythroblast, and the late erythroblast to form a reticulocyte, and before that, it lost the nucleus, because the red cells does not have any nucleus. The red cells or erythrocytes, they are big concave structures. They don't have a nucleus. They are 
composed of hemoglobin, lipid, ATP, and carbonic anhydride. The major function is to transport oxygen from lung to the tissue and carbon dioxide from tissue to the lung. And actually, they play a role in transporting extra oxygen and CO2 because the major function is an hemoglobin. Hemoglobin are four subunits, alpha-1, alpha-2, alpha beta-1, and beta-2. And they have also four hem. And inside of this hem, as you can see over here, it's an iron. And this I have affinity to transport oxygen. And the four globin molecule transport carbon dioxide and carbon anhydride is involved over here to transport the CO2 and also transport nitric oxide. How the blood cells get formed? This is what we call a process that we call erythropoiesis. It involves a very um, a molecule or hormones that we call erythropoiesis stimulating hormone or uh, erythropoietin, APO. When the oxygen decreases in the blood during an hypoxia, a stimulus has been received by the kidney that will produce, increase the production of this EPO, this erythropoietin that stimulate the red bone marrow to produce the red cells. And the red cells, of course, the major constituent is the hemoglobin that will increase the transport of the oxygen in the rest of the body. How these red cells have been produced, this is by the process that called erythropoiesis. One single stem cell in the bone marrow will be differentiated in a proto-erythroblast, giving, giving an early erythroblast, then an intermediate erythroblast, then a late erythroblast that will lose the nucleus to become a reticulo site that will differentiate into mature red cells or erythrocytes, as you can see over here. And this all, of course, happen in the red bone marrow or milieu tissue. In those milieu tissue, the stem cells differentiate and become mature red blood cells. To make a red cell, we need at least seven days. About 1% of circulating red blood cells work out per day. The average lifespan for red cells is about 120 days. So when the red cells are produced by the, the, the bone marrow, Middle wheat tissue. Ten percent of it can can get damage rupture of the membrane by hemolysis. And those old and damaged red cells, red blood cells can be engulfed by the macrophage within the liver, the kidney, or the spleen. Red cells, blood cells can be also engulfed by entirely without hemolysis by the macrophage and within the macrophage 
it will be digested and catalyzed into amino acids that are going to be recycling by the bone marrow to reproduce again the red blood cells. They're hem also or uh, into uh, can be also breaking down in the hem, and the hem we have inside iron that can be transported in the circulation by the transferring and be recycled also to produce red blood cells because if you remember the red blood cells the major constituent are the hemoglobin so the iron here it, it, it can be recycling by the bone marrow to produce the hemoglobin and that is the major constituent of the red cells The M also can be um, digest to Billy Verdin. Billy Verdin can be converted into Billy Ribin. which is a yellow, yellowish color. The biliverdin is green and the biliverdin is yellowish. It can be extracted by the liver, by the bile. If you ever heard about the jaundice, the jaundice is caused actually by biliverdin being building up on those are people that have a jaundice. They have a liver problem. Once extracted in the bile, in the bile, they go. Um, it's going to be um, converted by intestinal bacteria into erbilin and stericobilin that are, can be eliminated in the feces or be absorbed in the, the circulation reaching out the kidney and we will be eliminated in the urine. This is just another slide summarizing the recycling and uh, uh, of the red cells red cell producing by the bone marrow, 120 days in general circulation, that's the life, uh, life sperm. The agent abnormal or damaged red cells can be engulfed by the macrophage, either in the liver, spleen, the kidney. Once in the macrophage, they are going to be digest. giving amino acid that can be recycled, of course, to produce more protein for the red blood cells. Their hem also, um, the, the hem also can be, um, I mean, the hemoglobin can be catalyzed into the hem, the hem giving the iron, the iron can be, plus the transferrin, can be transported into the spleen and then or directly to the bone marrow or the liver and serve as a storage for the iron. Can be catalyzed to biliverdine, green at color, which can be converted into bilirubin. Bilirubin is a yellowish color that can build up in the liver causing if you heard about the jaundice disease and it will be extracted outside of the liver by the bile, reach out the intestine, once is mixed with the bacterial, intestinal bacterial, it will be uh, eliminated by the feces as bilirubin derivative or reach the kidney to be eliminated. 
also by uh, urine. As you can see here, the iron blast uh, transported by the transferrin can, can uh, reach the liver and be stored and uh, play a role as a storage for the iron. The spleen also can play a role as a storage for the iron that can help building up again new red blood cells. Blood cells are um, blood type are genetically determined by the presence or absence of red blood cell surface antigens. We have um, antigen A, we have antigen B, we have antigen A and B, and we have also another type of antigen arises. Type A red blood cells, D have in their surface an antigen A. And in their plasma, we have an antibody B circulating. Type B red cells, they have, of course, antigen B. This is why we call it type B, because of the antigen B in their surface. And they have an anti A antibody in their plasma circulating. Type A, B, they have both antigen in their surface, A and B. They cannot have any antibody, A or antibody, B, circulating in their plasma. Type O, antibody, it's new, does not have no antigen in their surface. And therefore, they have anti-A and anti-B antibody antibodies circulating in their surface. So of course, they, they can, if an antibody, if a, a type A having an antigen A in their surface, and they are in contact of with an antibody A, there will be cross reactions between the antibody and the antigen because they are compatible. This is an antigen A with an antibody A. So they are going to have a cross reactions. This is what we call causing agglutinations. But if I put the anti antigen A with an antibody B, there will be no agglutinations. But if an anti antigen A with an antibody A, it will be an agglutination. The first study in the rhesus was in the rhesus monkeys. We have rhesus positive that have this antigen present on the surface of the red cells. And you agglutinate with the antibody anti D. And rhesus negative do not have those antigen present. So if I put the antibody D, it will not show any agglutinations, no cross reactions. So let's look at those. Determine the blood type. So let's look at first this blood samples that I don't know which blood sample. I put it within contact with an antibody A and it show agglutination. Just here, I can tell that this is an A type cells. When I put it with an anti B, it does not show any agglutinations, just to prove that this is a group A. When I put it in contact of an anti D, it show agglutination. That means it is a rhesus. It have an antigen rises in the surface, so it is a, a positive because it's a rhesus positive. This blood type sample does not show any agglutinations in contact with an antibody A, 
which show that the antigen in the surface, it's not, it cannot be an A. But when I put it with an antibody B, it shows an agglutination. That's the proof that this is a group of B. And it shows agglutinations with an anti D, that means it's a B positive. For this blood sample, it shows an agglutination with an antibody anti A and an antibody anti B. That means they have both antigen in the surface, A and B. That means it's group AB, and it shows agglutinations with anti D. That means it's an AB positive. For this group sample, it doesn't show agglutination with an antibody anti A, neither with an antibody anti B, which means does not have any antigen on the surface, doesn't have anti, uh, antigen A, does not have antigen B, because doesn't show any agglutinations with either antibody for A or antibody for B. So that means it's an O over here. But it doesn't show any agglutination with an anti D. That means it does not either have, is not a rhesus a positive. So it is a rhesus negative, so therefore we name it O negative. So let's talk about the hemolytic disease of a newborn, HDN. You know that the fetus is in contact with the maternal circulations. The mother raises negative blood cells and the raises fetal positive enter the maternal circulation. Therefore, the maternal raises negative red blood cells and the anti raises antibodies are in contact. They will show agglutinations. Those maternal anti raises antibodies across the placenta. And those agglutination of the fetal arises positive red blood cells lead to this disease, this harmful disease, HDN, hemolytic disease of the newborn, where the mother produces an anti resist antibodies that cross the placenta and cause agglutination and hemolysis of the fetal red blood cells. Other disorders, hemoglobinuria, hemoglobinin breakdown product in urine due to the access of hemolysis in the bloodstream. Hematuria, the wall red blood cells uh, can be found in the urine due to kidney failure, for example, or some other tissue damage. Anemia, it's uh, caused by, um, actually, it's abnormal level of uh, hemoglobin. They are really below normal. And this is, can be caused by several conditions. The white cells, also called leukocyte. The white cells does not have hemoglobin. They have nuclei and have other organelles. Function different against Pathogens remove toxin and waste and affect normal abnormal cells. You have five types: neutrophils, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocyte, and monocyte. They move either by antigen antibodies 
cross reactions, chemotactism, amoeboid movement, or DAP disease movement. Neutrophil, also called polymorphonuclear leukocyte. If you look at the nucleus, you have several poles. They represent 50 to 70 percent of the circulating white cells. Its cytoplasm is granulated, so this is granulocyte white cells. They are very rich on hydrogen peroxide or cyper peroxide, so they kill bacteria. And they are the ones that form the pus that you can find in some infected acne. And they can release also prostaglandin and leukotrienes. Next, eosinophils. It's also cytoplasm granulated. It's also called acidophils. They represent 2 to 4 percent of the circulating white blood cells. They extract toxic compounds such as nitric oxide and cytotoxic enzymes. They attack, therefore, large parasites. and control inflammation with enzyme that counteract inflammatory effects of neutrophil and mast cells. Eosinophil. Next, basophil. That represents 1% of circulating white cells. They are small as compared as the other white cells. They release histamine and heparin to prevent blood clothing. And it's also a granulated cytoplasm. Monocytes. Present 2 to 8 percent of the circulating white blood cells. They are very large. They can become macrophages when they enter the peripheral tissue. And they adapt macrophage action, which is on goal of large particles and pathogen secret substance that attack immune uh, system cells and fibroblasts to uh, injured area. Monocyte. Lymphocyte present 2 to 30 percent of circulating white blood cells. They are larger than the red cells, as you can see here, the red blood cells, and this is the lymphocyte. They can migrate in and out of the blood. They are mostly found in the connective tissue and lymphatic organs. And of course, they are part of the body-specific defense system. We have three types of lymphocytes, B cells that attack the foreign cells directly, and the, the, B, the T cells attack directly. The B cells are immoral immunity, 
and the natural killer cells that we can find them um, in abnormal tissues such as cancerous uh, tissue. The differential count of circulating web cells can detect changes, um, um, can be detected in some infections um, uh, or during some inflammation and uh, during some allergic reactions. Leukopenia, for example, it's uh, the white cells are very low. Leukocytosis is very high. Leukemia, it's extremely high white blood cells. So just by measuring the, um, the count of the white blood cells in any uh, body, we can determine uh, that they have some disorder, disorder uh, for on this population. So as we can, we talk about it that all the blood cells are originated from hemocytoblasts, which produce myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. The myeloid stem cells differentiate into progenitor cells, which produce all the white cells except the lymphocyte. The lymphocyte came from lymphocyte came during the pro, pro, lympho, lymphoid stem cells during process that we call lympho, lymphoiesis. The white blood cells develop entirely in the bone marrow, except the monocyte. The monocyte develop into macrophages in peripheral tissue. Some lymphoid stem cells migrate to peripheral lymphoid tissue, such as thymus, spleen, lymph nodes, and produce lymphocyte. During this white blood cells development, we have some factors such as monocy monocyte stimulating factors or granulocyte stimulating factors that will help to produce this white cells populations. So let's look at them. So we already showed that uh, the EPO um, will produce the red or erythrocytes. So for the other white cells, so let's not talk about the platelets right now. So let's focus on the white cells. So we have one emetocytoblast that can be differentiated in myoblast in some uh, stem cells progenitors. and a lot of granulocyte stimulating factors can cause this differentiation. So the myeloblast stem cells will be developed into myelocyte to either develop into basophil, eosinophil, or neutrophil granulocyte cells of the white cells. The stem cells also can be um, differentiated into a progenitor of the monoblast that will differentiate to a monocyte or into lympho and lymphoid stem cells. will differentiate into lymphoblasts that will differentiate, of course, to lymphocyte.
Here it's just a table showing you all those um, structure of those type of cells and their major functions. The platelets, they are cell fragment uh, pinch of uh, giant cells called mega caryocytes in the red bone marrow. They are very important in preventing the blood loss. They cause the plated plugs and they promote the formation and contractions of the clots. They circulate for 9 to 12 days and they are removed by the spleen. Two to two thirds are reserved for emergencies. We call them also thrombocytes and they have a nucleus. By the way, the only composant that doesn't have a nucleus so far is the red blood cells. Abnormal low platelet. We call that thrombocytopenia. And abnormal high platelets, we call that thrombocytosis. Three major functions of the platelets release important clotting chemical, temporarily patch damaged vessels wall, and actively contract tissue after clot formation. The platelet form predictions we call that thrombocytopoiesis that happen, as I said, in the red blood bone marrow from a gigantic cells that we call megacaryocyte. And this is under the control of several hormones, thrombopoietin, TPO, antilocin 6, or multi stimulating factors. During any cut or any injury to stop the bleeding. Three important events are going to play a role to stop the excessive blood loss. The first event is the vascular spasm. During this process, vasoconstrictions of the damaged blood vessels happen. This is the vascular phase. And another event is the platelet plaque formation, which is the platelet phase. And the last event is the coagulation phase or the blood clotting, the vascular phase. Thirty minutes of contractions on the cell on the telia cells contract, which expose the basal lamina to the bloodstream. On the telia cells release, in this case, chemicals such as adenosine diphosphate, tissue factors, and prostacycline, and some hormones such as on the telin. and stimulation of the smooth muscle contraction and cell division, and the endothelial cell membrane becomes sticky. The platelet phase begins within 15 seconds after injury. The first, the platelet 
attached to sticky endothelial surface to the basal lamina and to expose collagen fibers. And then after that, platelet aggregate stick together, form platelet plug, and close the small brick by those platelet cloths. And during this process, adenosine diphosphate is released, clothing factor is released, also platelet derived factors and calcium ions are released. So I go back to this slide. And they show you that this plat platel platelet form a plug over here, an aggregation, and they adhere to the endothelium. They adhere also to the basal lamina. to the vessel wall and to the smooth muscle. And they form this platelet plug and close, therefore, this small break. And during this process, different factors are releasing, such as adenosine diphosphate, clothing factors, PDGF, platelet, derived growth factor, and calcium ions. The coagulation phase begins 30 seconds or more after the injuries. This coagulation phases involve a series of the steps and those series of the step is lead to convert the circulating fibrinogen into fibrin. And the fibrin network cover the plate plug, chop the blood cells, and seal off the area. And during this coagulations, we have a three actually pathways. We have an extrinsic pathway, as you can see over here, and an intrinsic pathway. And those two pathways converge into common pathway. Extrinsic pathway, as the word said, it's happened outside the bloodstream. It involves the tissue factors and calcium. By, by the way, the iron calcium is involved in both pathways, the extra sec pathway and the intrinsic pathway, which we convert to a factor complex, uh, factor tissue fact, uh, factor, tissue factor complex. And this is to activate the factor X. The intrinsic pathway also activate this factor X, but not with the tissue factor three or two, but with an activation and plotted factor PF3. And clothing factor, you will activate factor X. The enzyme activate factor X form enzyme that we call prothrombinase. And this prothrombinase will convert prothrombin into thrombin. 
and thrombin will convert the fibrinogen into fibrin. And this fibrin network will cover the plate plug that has been formed, trap the blood cells, and seal off the area. This process of selling this area, it's a positive feedback. Because of you can see over here, as soon as one plate is formed, it brings more plates, platelets. And as soon as this area is sell off, what's going to happen, everything stops. Of course, you you seen that the calcium, which is the common between the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway, is very essential to the clothing process. Vitamin K is also very essential to this clothing area process. So after the clot has formed, plate is contracts and pull torn area together. Let's take between 30 to 60 minutes. After that, what's happened? Slow process of dissolving the cloth. Thrombin and tissue plasminogen activator TPA activate the plasminogen. Plasminogen produce plasmid that digests this fibrin strand that has been produced. This is the injured area. One plate it can cause more plates coming in. This is like a feedback, positive feedback. And as soon as this clot is formed, everything stops. So the plates are going to be attached, as you can see, to the blood vessel wall. So recapitulations, the stages for the coagulation are the activation of the tr prothrombinase, conversions of the prothrombin to the thrombin, and this thrombin will convert the fibrinogen into the fibrin, and they have two pathways involved, extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. They will activate the factor X, and the factor X will activate the prothrombinase and conversions of the prothrombin to the thrombin and conversions of the fibrinogen to the fibrin. So, so far we saw the function of the cardiovascular system, the blood, five function of the blood, the structure of the wall blood, plasma and the form element, the three the, the, the process of the blood cell formation or hemopoiesis, the three class of the plasma protein, albumin, globulin, and fibrinogen, the red blood cells structure and function, the hemoglobulin structure and function, 
the red blood cells productions are recycling, the blood type ABU arises, the white blood cell structure and function, the five type of the white blood cells, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, monocyte, and lymphocyte. Differentiate uh, white blood cells account and related disease, the white blood cells predictions, the platelet structures and function, the platelet prediction, the three phase of the hemostasis, vascular plated coagulation, and finally, the fibro, fibrinolysis. Thank you so much, and I will see you for next lecture about next one we will talk about the pump the heart which is also part of the cardiovascular system